from these things whatever given to you how many pens can we make if you think like that so if you start with making a pen we need one cap one refill and a barrel so we can easily say with these three we can make one pen from the balanced equation we know yes these many number of moles of reactants require these many number of moles of other reactant but i will be giving a scenario where exactly same number is not available something will be in excess other thing will be in less calculation of the amount of product according to limiting reagent we have to do so 3 mole of h2 produces 2 mole of ammonia 1 mole of h2 will produce 2 by 3 mole of ammonia hello students welcome to alan distal in this video we will be studying about the concept called as limiting reagents and its application in different types of problems so to understand what is limiting reagents we will start with a simple example where we have taken one refill one cap and one outer container known as barrel like from these things whatever given to you how many pens can we make if you think like that so if you start with making a pen we need one cap one refill and a barrel so we can easily say with these three we can make one pen yes or no like uh, you can just keep a refill and a cap inside the barrel you will be getting one pen so that you can easily understand the same scenario you look at now like we have three barrels two caps and one refill from this set given to you how many pens can we make again if you think logically again we can only make one pen because we only have one refill and one uh, one cap and one barrel yes or no that means we also have two barrels in extra and one cap in extra but we don't have refill to make a pen out of it even though you have been given with a three outer containers two caps and one refill you can only make single pen so understand the same concept with respect to a reaction imagine all these are all these are reactants and a pen is a product so from the reactants you are going to get a product so the substance which is taken in lesser quantity that is deciding the product formation or not because here if you can think of refill is taken in lesser amount only one refill we have taken that is actually deciding how many pens are going to be formed because if you have only one refill because it is lesser we are getting only one pen if you have one more refill yes we can make other pen also but we only have one refill so only one pen is obtained so substance or the reactant which is taken in lesser amounts or lesser quantities that will decide the product formation or not yes or no that means the substance which limits the reaction which limits the product formation that is called as limiting reagent you may ask a question sir what happened to the other cap and the other container they are left unreacted they are present as they are initially they are left unreacted the same is applicable for a reaction we will understand the same for a reaction now <coughs> so limiting reagents so quite often one of the reactants is present in smaller than the other as required according to the balanced equation from the balanced equation we know yes these many number of moles of reactants require these many number of moles of other reactant but i'll be giving a scenario where exactly same number is not available something will be in excess other thing will be in less so whatever the substance which is taken in lesser quantity that will decide the amount of product formation yes or no the reactant which gets completely consumed so a substance which is taken in lesser quantity that will be completely consumed because it will completely undergo the reaction and limits the amount of product that is known as limiting reagents 
also called as LR, defined by LR. And the other reactants which were in excess, they are called as excess reactants or excess reagents, they are said to be ER. Is that point clear or not? The substance which is taken in lesser amounts that will limit the product formation and that is why the name limiting reagent and the substance which is taken in excess that is called as excess reagent. Sir, everything is fine but how to identify it? If you have given 3 barrel, 2 cap and 1 refill, I can identify it. But how to identify in a reaction? That is again a twisting. So, to understand like which is going to limit the reaction, we should have a balanced chemical equation. From the balanced chemical equation, for, for respect to number of reactants, how many moles of other reactants are required, that we will study, that we will get to know from the balanced equation. And we will be given with other quantities. So, from the balanced equation and from the given data, we can actually find out which is in lesser and which is in greater quantities. But how to actually do it? Let us understand the same with an example. So, first one I have placed an example like identification of limiting reagents. Here we have given an example. N2 plus 3H2 gives rise to 2NH3. Look at this reactions. Look at this reaction all of you. Nitrogen reacting with hydrogen to form ammonia. Check whether it is balanced or not. N2, 2 nitrogens. 2NH3, 2 nitrogens balanced. 3H2, 3 into 2, 6 hydrogen atoms. 2NH3, 2 into 3 again, 6 hydrogens. So, this reaction is balanced. From this reaction, what we can say? 1 mole of 1 mole N2 require requires how many moles of H2? 1 mole N2 requires 3 moles of H2 from the balanced equation. Require 3 mole of H2. But what they have given to you? They have given 2 mole of N2 and 5 mole of H2. 2 mole of N2 and 5 moles of H2 has been given to you. So, for 1 mole of N2, we require 3 moles of H2. So, can I say, so 2 mole of N2 require, 2 mole of N2 require how many mole of H2? For 1 mole, we require 3 mole of H2. For 1 mole of N2, we are requiring 3 moles of hydrogen. For 2 mole of N2, we will be requiring obviously 6 mole of hydrogen. 6 mole of H2. But how many moles of H2 has been given to you? Only 5 mole. Required is 6 mole. Given is 5 mole. Can I say given quantity is lesser when compared to required? So obviously we can easily say H2 is in lesser quantity when compared to the required. Yes or no? So, the substance which is taken in lesser that is called as limiting reagent. So, which one is the limiting reagent here? For 1 mole of N2, we required 3 mole of H2. For 2 mole of N2, 6 mole of H2 are required, but only 5 mole of H2 is given. So, H2 is taken in lesser quantity. So, it is the limiting reagent. Which one is the limiting reagent? H2 is the limiting reagent. And first step is identification of limiting reagent. We have to identify which one is the limiting reagent. Second step is with respect to limiting reagent, the quantity of product has to be calculated. Right? So, concept we are studying the same. Step one identification of limiting reagent students. The same whatever we have discussed, we will be getting no. One mole of N2 requires. 3 moles of H2 to react completely. 2 moles of N2 requires 6 moles of H2 as per the balanced equation. But only 5 moles of H2 are given to you. So, required number of moles of H2 is greater when compared to given. 
required moles of H2 greater when compared to available or given moles. So, which is in lesser now? H2. So, H2 is the limiting reagent. Yes or no? So, that is the step 1. You have to identify which one is the limiting reagent from the given set of condition. Step 2 now. We identified the limiting reagent. Now, we have to find out how much amount of product is formed with respect to limiting reagents because from the starting we are saying the substance which is in lesser quantity that is limiting the product formation. So here with respect to H2 we have to find out the ammonia formed. I can again say from the balance equation 3 mole of H2 3 mole of H2 is forming how many mole of ammonia? 2 mole of ammonia. Yes or no? So, 3 moles of H2 if completely reacts, you will be getting 2 moles of ammonia. Here, 5 moles of H2 is completely reacting. So, therefore, 5 moles of H2 will be forming. How many moles of ammonia of cross multiplication 5 into 2 by 3 that is equals to 10 by 3 mole of ammonia. 10 by 3 moles of ammonia you are getting not the gram. Understand this point. This is with respect to mole. So with respect to the given 5 mole of H2 you will be getting 10 by 3 mole of ammonia. That point you can understand that is the quality of product form you can find out. Step 2 as I was saying calculation of the amount of product according to limiting reagent we have to do. So, 3 mole of H2 produces 2 mole of ammonia, 1 mole of H2 will produce 2 by 3 mole of ammonia. So, 5 moles will be producing 5 into 2 by 3 that is 10 by 3 mole of ammonia. So, this is the number of moles of ammonia we can write the same in grams as well. So, 10 by 3 into 1 mole of ammonia will be weighing 17 gram. So, 10 by 3 into 17 gram of ammonia. So, this much weight of ammonia, this is the weight of ammonia formed when 2 moles of N2 and 3 moles of H2 react with each other. Right students, this is the concept of limiting reagents. We will try to solve an example. For the reaction, 2P plus Q gives rise to R. They have given the reaction. 2P plus Q gives rise to R. 8 mole of P and 5 mole of Q will produce. So, first let us go with balance equation. 2 mole of P require, require 1 mole of Q. 1 mole of Q. Therefore, can I say 8 mole of P, 8 mole of P require how many moles of Q? For 2 moles of P you are requiring 1 mole of Q. For 8 moles of P you will be requiring 4 mole of Q. So, 8 mole of P itself is given to you. So, P is all completely used. But still we have Q left out 1 more mole. So, which is taken lesser obviously P because Q is one mole extra is there. So, P is the limiting reagent. With respect to P we have to find out the quantity of product form. So, 2 moles of P again. So, P is the limiting reagent that is done. Again, 2 mole of P when completely react forms 1 mole of R, 1 mole of R. Therefore, 8 mole of P, 8 mole of P will form, will form 4 mole of R, 4 moles of R. So, we have to identify the limiting reagents and we have to find out the quantity of product form with respect to limiting reagents. So, 4 mole of R that will be the right answer. 
right students this is how we can understand the concept of limiting reagent and all i hope all of you understand it clearly thank you all everyone bye